everybody. Uh, my name is Garrett Fuller with Foundation. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, as you're probably well aware, uh, we are going to do a overview of Foundation, um, of course, for, for CPAs that have uh, some Foundation clients and, and hopefully get you up to speed on some core functionality, core reports, maybe just get a little bit more in tune with Foundation and how the system flows and better utilization. So as, as you probably assume, there's CPAs joining today that have some background on the system already. So some of this may be basic. Some of it, hopefully, you don't know and come away with a few things, of course. Um, and feedback's awesome. You know, after, if anybody wants to reach out and say, hey, that was great. I need something more detailed, right? I'm a more advanced person. Great. Just just let, let me or know or let Chris know, Chris Masteller, who I think you've probably mostly all communicated with um, on things. So, you know, feedback's, feedback's absolutely welcome. Um, now, even though I am a salesperson here, don't worry, this is not a salesy thing. Um, half my time here of the 20 years was support and implementations and some training and that type of thing. So I'll, I'll be it. I'll probably be a little rusty on some things. Um, definitely uh, had, had many years on that side of it. So I won't bore you too much on me, but there I am. And we're essentially going to hop right in and, and uh, get to it. Questions, you can um, pop them in the uh, go to webinar control panel. I'll do my best to address those. Most likely for some of them, I might get back with people individually on um, with uh, if there's something specific that they want to know. I had a few emails shared to me from Chris yesterday, you know, specific reports that show A, B, or C, you know, things like that. We're absolutely available for help. Um, now, we're going to jump right into the software here in a couple minutes. Here's big picture what we do. And it might sound silly, right? You know we do job cost accounting um, right off the bat. It's really just an awareness for, for other things that we offer in case you're working with, um, now this does sound salesy, which I didn't mean it to be, um, in case you're working with a company that, you know, hey, I, I need help with, you know, field solutions or, you know, we're not happy with our mobile app or, you know, hey, we're looking at this PM system. And, and so over the years, we've grown a lot in different platforms as far as what we offer. And so I'm just listing those out here. Obviously, we do the job cost accounting. Um, you know, we're targeting those small to mid-sized contractors and uh, hopefully do an excellent job with that. Project management, right, for people that need a little bit more. Uh, for the document management, uh, correspondence tracking, right, RFIs, submittals, meeting minutes, uh, maybe change order management from outside. Mobile, right? Primarily mobile time card entry, mobile field logs. So employees out in the field can key time in, push that back into the system. You know, pr approvals are there. This is a big one that I like um, CPAs and CPA firms to be aware of. Our construction payroll service, payroll for construction. Um, that's huge, right? So, you know, if you're talking to somebody that needs to outsource payroll or you think it's an advantage to them, we do it where it's it's truly nice and seamless where the time cards go in foundation and then they pre essentially press a button and we're doing the rest. You know, we're paying their taxes. We're doing their checks, direct deposits, W-2s, but it's it's all done. Their job costings, uh, the same effect. GL's updated the same way as if they did payroll in-house where they can still run certified payroll union reports, but they, you know, we took the headache of, of, of potentially the uh, tax filings and returns and that type of thing. Estimating, um, some of you are probably aware, and here's our, you know, product, uh, you know, umbrella, you know, foundation, payroll for construction, project HQ, that's our PM solution, and it's all tied together. Um, under the foundation family of products, we have McCormick estimating. Um, they target a lot of electrical contractors, um, some plumbing and mechanical, uh, estimating Edge recently became part of the foundation family of products. Uh, roofing, maybe drywall, more of a square footage estimating tool. Um, now we integrate with any estimating software, but just wanted to bring bring that whole product environment into into play here. All right, so that was it. That was hopefully the only boring part for you. We're going to jump right in now and uh, get into the product. Right, <clears throat> so. This probably looks familiar to a lot of you. This is the main menu. So I'm gonna start with some real quick basics 
and then we're going to um, get into some things about reporting, maybe some little tips and tricks, um, some how-to as uh, for features. Um, so we'll we'll start with just a quick rundown. What you know, what are we looking at? So the very top, right? That's our that's our base core modules. So all of our clients at least have that, right? And that's giving them all the traditional construction accounting items, right? Now below it, these are per se the optional modules along with say our mobile app, you know, project management tools. Um, you know, some of our clients have heavy equipment that they'll want to track for like usage, um, preventative maintenance. Some of our clients have an inventory that they want to manage um, or just have a product database of items to use. <clears throat> Time and material, usually best fit for larger uh, jobs that are cost plus, right? Not like a quick extra change order. Fixed assets is primarily to help with the depreciation tracking through our system. Uh, service dispatch, that's for companies that have a service division, like think of a HVAC company with a residential service team, you know, where they're driving around in trucks. So there's a, a nice tool to manage that. <clears throat> Unit price billing, traditionally more for quantity driven billings, heavy highway, DOT type work. Um, <clears throat> now Project HQ is in a sense replacing this module long term. And I'm not going to get into that today. Um, based on feedback we can in the future. Scheduling, right, more of a Gantt chart style scheduling tool. Imaging is allowing our clients to go paperless in the software. There's an approval process for that as well. <clears throat> and down below, we're going we're gonna to actually talk about some of these features here pretty quick with security, control files, the report writer, and, uh, and that type of thing. <clears throat> so first thing I'm going to mention, basics of module layout. Again, real elementary, so bear with some of these initial statements here. Daily is your day-to-day. All right, that's where we're going to go to do an AP, put in an AP invoice, right? Do a check run. GL, that's going to be doing journal entries, for example. Entering a time card, right? The day-to-day. -day. Maintenance, that's maintaining that module, um, which may go without saying, right? Adding a new job, editing a job, adding a new account to the GL, you know, adding or editing a customer. And obviously reports are, are just that. They're the report section within each individual module. Now, as some of you are aware, we have this report writer, which we're going to take a look at, um, primarily used to do custom job reports and custom financials. So we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> Quick links. Now, these are really, really helpful, although a real basic and easy concept. So each user, including yourselves, right? Um, <clears throat> sure, if some of you log in with your own user ID and password, right? So you can create your own favorites over here. You call them whatever you want. Right, if you hit the little um, wrench here, I think that's a wrench, you can uh, hit add, right, and add your own category. You might say my favorites or, you know, main reports, financials, who knows. And then you're essentially dropping over here whatever you want, right? I have one that says key reports. So these are specific to you. So if you add these, you're not changing anything for other users, it's just yours. I pulled over some financials, maybe you want to see the I don't know, an aging report on an easy basis. So not just reports, but day-to-day -day functionality. Maybe you want to pull over journal entries or WIP reports or something like that. Again, basic concept, pretty helpful. There is a CPA audit review. Um, in some ways, this can kind of, not say replace it, but you can get a little bit more custom with your own shortcuts. But this is a base system module. The whole intent here, which was provided from feedback from a lot of CPAs, some of you may know or have been to a, our uh, CPA conference every year, uh, typically every year. Um, and so a lot of feedback came in on that. So this is a central spot if you really had no experience with foundation and you get in, it's like at least you can get here and have shortcuts to financials, right? Aging reports, right? Our subsidiary ledgers, um, GL and job cost tie outs. So you, you see the screen, you know, WIP reports, overhead feature sets. So pretty helpful area just to not have to kind of learn to bounce around, although I think the navigation is pretty straightforward. You know, if I'm looking for a report that's GL-based, I'm probably going there. So just a couple of the quick points there. Now, let's get into the, into the under the tools area. So the way that my, uh, my screen resolution set up, I'm scrolling down, not everybody has to, but down at the very bottom under system, we're gonna talk about security and the control files. Now this feature, not every user should have access to 
and and just even a word of caution, nothing's going to explode. But you, you do want to be pretty careful in this area. Um, I'm probably less stressing that than some others may at our company. I mean, it is what it is, right? You can see the functionality of what it what the check boxes mean. If you're if you're not sure of something, you want to ask us first. Some decisions here could you know, have a big factor of what, how the system works and flows, which is the intent. This is an area that we spend quite a bit of time with companies during the initial setup, but this is also an area that I even still today use a lot. If somebody says, hey, can this do this? And I said, well, geez, I don't think. Let's, sometimes we can. I just something we've added that I just haven't read in release notes. So this is an area where, say if I go to AP as a quick starting point, these are the defaults for each module, right? So this is the heart of how it knows what to do for say accounts payable for AR, general ledger, payroll, that's a huge one. The payroll one, huge in a sense of how it functions. So as you see here, I just threw in, these are just random, but you know, I have my, my cash account, maybe I have different ones for a you know, prepaid uh, cash situation, credit card, I should fill that in with my credit card account. These are defaults. It doesn't mean on certain situations, I'm not gonna change them, right? Maybe when I do a check run, I'm gonna switch it on the fly to some other random account, but this is the defaults. Um, control dates. This is really important. Again, pretty basic, but something to be aware of. As you see, mine are probably wide open, right? I'm out to 20, 2025 20, because I don't care, right? For my play purposes. A lot of our clients right now, they probably have December open and January. You know what I mean? They're, they're not done with the last year if they're using a, you know, if they're on a calendar year. But think of the accounting modules AP, GL, AR, right? Payroll. This is the dates that we're allowed to post to. Doesn't mean I can't run reports from 20 years ago, but like right now, you know, if this said, you know, 1-1-21 to, um, I shouldn't say that, I'm sorry, 12-1 of 21 to January 31st of 22, I would only be able to post entries in those two month periods. So like when the year is over for somebody and you generate the year end close, well then you wanna block any entries prior to that, right? Doesn't mean it's a hard close. It doesn't mean you can't reopen it. Real common situation when I was in support, you know, hey, we did our year end close. We forgot to do our CPA's journal entries. Like, That's okay, we can go open these up, do that correction and reclose, you know, and then put the dates back to the current uh, time period. <clears throat> Prevent or warn. So if it's a small user base, you know, if it's a company that has like one user, maybe that's just like a warning to just say, hey, you accidentally put 2021 when it's really 2022. Did you, did you mean that? So um, that's, you know, stricter, somewhat of soft warning. So that's really important, again, those control dates. But as, as you look at some of these different tabs within each of the control files, there's a, there's a lot of good stuff here, right? Some are pretty specific features. Um, Random like here, you know, for expired workers comp or insurance certificates or something, it's like prevent. I can't put an invoice in or, or in POs, I'm saying warn me if I put a PO or a sub in and that vendor has an expired certificate, right? How do I want my aging broken down for AP, um, right? Deep posting, auto posting to ac operate more like a QuickBooksy thing. So that, you know, prevent entry to a duplicate invoice. So these are really critical um, and just for favorites, right? So you, you wanna make sure that everybody has access to that if you're kind of controlling the situation. Um, but that is where we're going to do a lot of those major settings. There's a lot of good um, items in there, right? Some people hide jobs that are closed, you know, anything more than two years ago. They're not out of the system, but out of, they're hidden out of the drop downs. There's so many little, little tips and, and Easter eggs in there to help use the system more efficiently um, and manage the workflow of the software. Okay, so so control files, and if you come out with nothing else but maybe the control date feature, that's important. <clears throat> right to the left of it, security, that's where we're going to decide who can do and see what in the whole program. When someone logs in and our system's <clears throat> concurrent, right, it's like you can set up as many users as you want, a, a company can, it's how many are allowed to log in together, but those users are set up with their own credentials. So there's really no reason somebody should share a user ID and password. There's no benefit of that at all, right? So we can set up users and, and, and we're gonna have these recorded. We're gonna you know, send out things here, but 
you wouldn't need to say per se remember how to do this it's more of just the awareness of what what we're doing um, so I have a, just a couple users in this one an admin and then myself but even here if I said hey I can I can get into um, maybe maybe employees that are secure so think think of executives at a company maybe I can get into payroll but I can't see employees that are tagged as secure right so if I leave this unchecked it's like well I can get into payroll maybe do payroll for the field true but I those owners or executives, they, they don't even exist to me. Maybe I'm a project manager, and if I log into foundation, maybe I'm only seeing my job, so I would require project manager security, and I would associate myself to me, right, one-to-one. -one. You can block people from certain phases of a job, right, from a cost um, standpoint. Um, hide pay rates, right? Again, maybe, maybe I can enter time cards, but I can't see the pay rates. Now, that's just the initial basic settings. Right below each user, if I click on one, this is where we get into that granular security. Notice on the upper right, our little key here, our legend, green is yes, you can do it. And then really, I say ignore the yellow, meaning why bother? Why, why, if they can't get into it, just don't let them in, just hide it. You don't need to show it to them and tease them, right? But green is go. Now, so like here, I have a silly example where AP, I can't apparently do anything, right? They're all blocked. Everything under daily, all throughout that pro, all that module is blocked, except I think I have, yeah, an aging report. Not that that would really make sense maybe, but it's saying I can see nothing in AP except the aging report. So, you know, again, you can get very specific as far as what a person has access to. And that way too, just from a basic standpoint, when something's done, their user ID is tagged to it so we know who did it. All right. Basic functionality. First thing I always point out to people is add and modify. All right, so let, let's go to a, who knows, a vendor, right? So we're gonna go to AP maintenance, we're gonna go to vendors. This could be jobs, customers, GL accounts, you name it. Right here, add and modify. The most basic thing we can do, is adding is adding, right? It's a new one, modify is modifying. It's pulling up something and viewing it. Now, shortcuts in the system, I'll probably send that out to everybody as well. We have, you know, keyboard shortcuts. Like, I'm not typically clicking on add and modifying. I'm using a keyboard shortcut, F2, which, again, don't worry about remembering it. But F4 is a drop-down menu. So, like, when I'm opening a screen, I'm not really clicking on it. I already have the, the, the right selections done before it even opens. I would have hit, you know, started typing ahead or hit F4 to search by name or number Right, so modify is pulling up something that exists. If I'm in modify and I start to add, it's saying, hey, you're gonna waste your time, <laughs> right? This didn't used to be there many, many years ago. So people get through like entering a five minute thing, go, oh boy, I'm in modify, dang it. Probably don't say dang it, it's much, much worse, right? But this, yeah, so add and modify. And you can lock certain screens to say, when I come in here by default, have it as modify. Small, but you know, nice benefit. Another really basic function is list, F5, but list. You know, some people say, well, how do I get a chart of accounts, right? How do I see my vendors? It's like, well, just run a list. Any screen you're on, speaking of chart of accounts, if I go to GL maintenance and go to accounts, when I'm in a screen for entry, like here, my GL account, I just want a list, a report, show me a list. So I hit list and you get some um, options here. You know, what's the format of the list and just the chart of accounts. So you can create custom lists in the system as well. And I'll, I'll kind of dabble with that in our, in our report writer, our data genie report writer. But yeah, you just run in list. Same for day-to-day for -day transactions. I still, still screw up sometimes when I'll put in, say, I'll put in an AP invoice on a demonstration or something and we'll go look for it in a report. I'm like, wait, oops, I didn't post it. So when you're doing a day-to-day -day, uh, record, a day-to-day -day entry, Let's, let's say that, an, an, an invoice or a GL journal entry, anything that's going to post, right, which is essentially any transaction outside of maybe change orders and purchase orders, right, because they're not hitting a, a accounting per se uh, as far as general ledger. Like if we were putting in a basic invoice, again, I'm in ad mode, right, because we're adding one. Our transaction types, I'll kind of fall back in here a little bit. Um, my whole point of this example is we have to list and post after we do entry, but as the screen pops up, I'm thinking of some other things, right? But we're in ad mode. It's just a standard invoice. You could say, well, I don't know. Maybe it's a prepaid. We already, we already paid it. I, I wrote a check to somebody, which probably not so common, more credit card, right? 
So I could say, well, we already, we already paid for this thing. I used a credit card. I used my Amex, which is my default. And that'll help for any credit card reconciliation, which we'll get to. But yeah, you're picking the vendor, you know, who, who you bought it from, right? Uh, the job. But even if I just leave it as regular, if we throw a quick entry in here, um, job two. Now I'm, I'm tabbing through. I'm just using our little tab button on my keyboard, my little F4 for drop down. So again, you get pretty a, AP entry and time cards. Users should not really have to touch the mouse. It, it's, it's a much more efficient entry otherwise. So I'm going to save it by hitting OK or Enter. Right. So pretty basic. We saved that invoice. It didn't go anywhere yet, though. It's just sitting here is not posted. Now, I can still edit it, which we'll get into corrections in a bit, but I'm going to list it, right? So whether I did one entry or 20 of them, they're all waiting to me, for me to post them. Now, I can run a list by just maybe show me the ones I entered for this job or just the ones that I did only, nobody else, but let's, and I'm sure most people are just posting everything that they entered. So it gives you the opportunity, as you see here, to run a, a list, right, where you can say, oh, okay, here's what it's going to do to GL, here's what's going to hit job costing. So you scan through it, make sure it's accurate, and then you post. That's when it's hitting general ledger and job costing. Okay, and, I, and I'm, you know what, let's just post the one I did there today. So I'm just isolating my post to this one for today. Transaction 386, we're posting it, great. It's now pushed throughout the program. One thing I should mention, and I'm, I'm just for future here, as we do corrections together, I'm writing down that transaction number so I don't forget. Although it'd be easy to find it, okay? So we posted it. Now, I want to mention too, which I didn't think about earlier, is invoice date and transaction date. So think of AP invoices and AR invoice entry. What's the difference? This is simply the date of the invoice. Maybe the invoice was dated December 30th, but I want it to go into January. So this is the day it's gonna hit general ledger and job costing. This is simply the date that was on the invoice, you know, for aging purposes and things like that. And I can run reports from, for either one, invoice date or transaction date, but I would argue this is definitely the more pressing one. And this is the one that we use for those control dates, right? So even if I said I can only post in January of 2022, I can still put the invoice date prior to that. Who cares? You know, this is, this is the day it's hitting the, the GL. There's control file settings for what defaults. Should it be the system date? Should the invoice date default to the transaction date? I don't know. That's up to, you know, you, you and your clients to figure what's the best option on that. So, yeah. Now, one thing, too, if I pull up, let's, let's go to modify. And, and, again, I wasn't intending on doing this as far as my little list of things yet. But if, if we go to modify, right, I'm in AP. This could be in GL journal entries. AR invoice entries. I'm going to modify. It's like, well, what am I doing? I'm, it's asking me, what are you modifying? An unposted invoice. Do I want to adjust a posted invoice and reverse it? Um, but if I modify one that's not posted, which I had one in here from before, it's not posted, right? I can just delete it. Now, if something's posted, I can't just delete it because it's in history. It needs to go for, through a formal reversal where it keeps the audit trail. There is no audit trail for this. It's not, it's just sitting here waiting for something to happen. So I can, I can hit the little trash can to delete it. Okay. Saying that, let's think of the same concept, the trash can on a, a, on a job or a vendor. Hitting the delete button doesn't permanently get rid of a maintenance record. We're thinking, what do you, what do you mean? Like we can delete that, that invoice that wasn't posted. And it's gone, right? It's truly gone. It's out. But if I pull up, let's say job one, my random job. If I say delete it, do you sure? Yeah. It's not, oh no, it's gone, right? It's, it's, it's still there. It's still in history. But notice here in the drop down, it's no longer showing. It's kind of hiding it. I'd almost prefer if we're on a maintenance record like I am here in jobs for that to just say hide. It's still there. I can go run reports for job one. If I type in job one, I think, oops, it, oh, now it doesn't want to see it. Let me see if I can get, here we go. It shows as deleted. It's like, okay, well, I didn't see it in the drop down. It's still there, so I, I can undelete it, right? So that's hiding something. I just wanted to mention that. Now, if you said, well, what if I didn't remember the number? What, how do I get it back? 
well, not too bad. When you run those lists that we just talked about, I'm going to run a job list. This is on every list. Show deleted, yes, no only. I might have more deleted. I have no idea. Nope, just that one. Oh, and I, yeah, I undeleted the one, right? So, uh, oh, no, I didn't. But I, I was saying not active, right? Why? I don't know. So that was an active job, but there's my undeleted. So those things are really important. Those those statuses, right? Th those selections that I'm that I'm doing. Um, somebody just asked. Um, it might have been a couple minutes about clarifying the invoice date or transaction date as far as when it gets reflected in the general ledger. It's absolutely the transaction date. That's the that's the important one. Um, for the individual that asked, that's going to say your name, but I'm going to call you out. So, um, yes, very, very important. So if I go back to the invoice screen, right, invoice number, and this transaction date's all over the place, right? Journal entries, um, APAR, but on an invoice standpoint, that's why there's the two dates because it's like, well, this date is just the invoice, the literally the you know stamp date on the invoice. This is the date that we're hitting general ledger and job costing. I'm going to pull I'm going to bring up something right now. I don't know if it'll help me right here <laughs> in this example, but it'll it's something I wanted to bring up as far as getting help from, you know, just knowledge base of the software. You know, you got the support staff. I'm going to kind of dig into that later. Um you can go to help and current item and notice it's also just shift F1, but under help, I'm on an invoice entry screen, right? Nothing exciting. But you might like that. You might go, "What the heck is that field? What is it?" So, it, it tells us you're right. Transaction type. And it's cool. You get stuck in a little wormhole sometimes uh, in, in a good way. It's like, oh, look, there's a quick check feature. What does that mean? You click it and you're on another screen. So, yeah, these are these are great. You can you, you this is I use this a lot when I started here many years ago in support. I was like, what is this thing? Right. So even here it says this is the date that. Uh, yeah, for reporting the invoice date transaction date determines when the invoice will hit the you know general ledger and if applicable job cost module so it's like oh okay oh and that's set up here in the control file on ap2 tab there's a lot of good content here um exciting no but helpful Ab absolutely so help and uh current item even even reports you know if i if i was going to run a uh, yeah, i don't know a, a whip report right over under billing bonding reports and we're going to look at these in a second too you know when i pull this up um when i started i had no idea what this was you know i get it and like i don't know where these formulas you know shift f1 i mean it helped tremendously it's like oh okay it's doing this calculation it's taking this times this it's you know what i mean it was really helpful so don't underestimate that that help guide um in, in that help menu the search the search current item so it's a lot of good content there and you can search as well. I remember even somebody the first time overhead alley or weighted average overtime, right? I just as a literally vivid remember of that situation of, I was like, I don't know how to set it up. Probably shouldn't tell you that, but yeah, I was weighted average overtime calculated, setting up weighted average. Over, I mean, there's a lot of good content in here. So um, don't, don't dismiss that help menu for um, the, the searching or the shift, uh, F1 for the current screen that you're on tells you all about it. Search, awesome, right? Just a wildcard search and the actual user guide, which is it's just in part interactive, right? I can I can literally click on modules. You can blow it up, of course, you know, and and get into the various screens. Like, oh, I want to learn about the inventory module, and then within it, scroll. I mean, it's every nitty gritty thing. So it's 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 uh, almost 3,000 pages of fun, but that's that's available right through the help menu, okay? So I was doing add, modify, listing, and posting, right? So when we enter transactions, we list them and post them. System flow, everything we used to tell new 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 employees is like a, like a waterfall, right? I don't know if they still say that, but let's even just say the base modules. Um, we, we have AP, AR for day-to-day -day entry, right? Payroll. I mean, you can enter in POs, but that's not hitting GL at that point. These are all going here, right? And then they go to job costing if it's job related. That little weird thing I just drew. But it's all flowing to general ledger. If I enter something here in journal entries, for example, it's not going back. 
it only goes two. It's a downward, down the funnel, okay? And that's why corrections, we tell users, do them where they started in 90% of the situations, making that percentage up, but go back to the point where it caused the issue and fix it there, okay? Um, now, we will do that. We're gonna, we're gonna put it in an, an entry and we're gonna do a correction on a couple things. <clears throat> Real quick with reporting, obviously that's probably a big key of what you're doing for your clients, looking at reports, maybe doing some adjustments, um, maybe some other things, right? So GL reports, once you know, obviously, oh, I hit GL reports and they're there, you may want to you may want to play a little bit. You may want to go in and say, you know, I had a comp, uh, CPA, I think asked Chris Masteller yesterday, she sent me an email, hey, they're trying to find a report that showed their cash received on a job. In my head, I'm like, wow, there's a few. And I couldn't even remember the one in AR that I was thinking of. I was like, I don't remember which one exactly it is. It's like, okay, just go look. Not, I don't mean that meanly to the person asking, meaning I, to myself. I'm like, wait, here, just pull the thing up. So I had some random date ranges say, but this, I believe this did it. And, and actually, when you see this, I had these, these dates saved. Michael, like, well, why? How are those in there already? I saved them. That's something else I wanted to bring up today. When you, if for, and this is specific to the user logging in, the user ID and password. When you log in, if I said nine times out of ten, I always want to show the full address on this report for whatever reason. I can say check that box now and say save defaults. That's going to save that setting for me on that specific report moving forward. Save defaults. So that way, every time, I don't have to remember to check this or switch this or any of that, okay? So, but yeah, so this one was, you could run it by job, right? I was like, oh, okay, yep, we can pick a certain job, whatever it may be, and that had nothing on it, apparently. So I'll go delete that job and find another one. But yeah, so then it would show the total cash received. And it's like, so there, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of reports there. But let's, going back to that initial statement, if I go to GL reports, there's the financials. These are the preloaded. Actually, everything here is preloaded except anything under Data Genie. Those are ones that people made, us, you, the client. Those are custom, which we'll look at. But you have your balance sheet, your income statement. Um, these are, again, the preloaded ones. Even the preloaded ones have some standard settings that you can tweak a little bit. Do I wanna see budget versus actual? Do I wanna see by division? We can do divisions or profit centers, so to speak, in the software. Do I wanna show account numbers, yes or no? And if I do all the time, again, save defaults, right? Now, how do these show up here? It's another thing I wanted to bring up. Like, how, how did it know that that was my, my, one of my income accounts? Well, when we set up our chart of accounts, and where would I go to do that? Maintenance, I'm maintaining that module and I'm gonna to go to accounts, okay? So I'm gonna modify, because I'm not adding one, I wanna pull up an account. All right, let's pull up, uh, and I could have typed that, but here, contract income. You know, whether there's 20 income accounts or not, um, here's an income account. So in this screen here, a really important setting is the statement category. This is, like it's saying, include in financials. Now, if I have a, an account that is not selected to be included in my financials, it will tell you that when you go run financials. You're miss, this account doesn't have a setting for where it should show on your income statement and balance sheet. Like, hey, it should probably. So it reminds you and checks, checks on you for it. But these are just the preloaded options. Like, well, that's an income account, so I said it's an income. And that's part of the income statement. Right, so it goes across the board for any of the accounts, ex, you know, expense accounts, right? If we pull up a uh, you know, materials, you know, it's gonna show under direct job expense. This is also very important, require job costing, right? So in any time this account's used, that's a material expense, it's job related. Force the user to put in a job, a cost type, right? If they're using cost codes and then a cost class you know, labor materials, subs. So any direct expense should have required job costing, arguably, right? I'm sure there's exceptions to every rule. If it's a balance sheet item, don't allow it. You know what I mean? We're not, we don't need to do that. So it, I, and I'm sure training, you know, we've, we've kind of 
honed in on a lot of key things over time. They beat that up quite a bit on setups. And when we're on these chart of accounts, it's like, hey, make sure it's it's got the right statement category listed for where, you know, where it should go on the balance sheet and income statement and also forcing these um uh, where am I? The not the statement of categories in that case. Sorry, the uh, required job cost distribution, right? Like any of my balance sheet items, they're not job cost specific. It's my expenses, right? My direct expenses. I'm not going to discuss this today. You may have noticed on the chart on the account setup. If I go back, there's a section for like overhead allocation. There's a few different options in our software for allocating overhead. Now, right off the bat, payroll burden is already going to your jobs. Right, the company share of FICA, FUTA, SUDA, workers comp, fringes, general liability insurance, that's already going to job costing under the burden category. So we're already accommodating for that. But any of those indirect expenses, right, the, the non-job specific expenses, we have a few different options, this being one of them, to allocate those indirect costs, that overhead to jobs proportionately. And uh, maybe that's a whole nother thing. Um, <clears throat> so if we go to, Let's see what else I wanted to talk about. There's a whole bunch. So I'm still talking about reporting. Um, let me point out a couple quick key reports. You've got your financials. You've got custom financials. We're going to do those in a second. At least show you where they're at. Overhead allocation reporting. That needs to be set up first to work, right? We've got over under billing. Now the one in the general ledger, right? If I'm where I'm going to GL reports over under. This one can actually post to to the GL right, for, for our over or under um, values. This is another screen, it's like, oh man, there's a lot of settings here, right? <clears throat> Close date. This is cool because <clears throat> let's say I wanna run this for a month, right? And it's like, all right, here's my active jobs or whatever. Um, but <clears throat> maybe, maybe I closed a job this month and I want that to appear. So I could say, well, yeah, include closed jobs that were closed this month, which is kind of nice, right? So that's a pretty cool feature. Over under billing on closed jobs, yes or no. Gap calculation, no, method one, method two. Again, use that help current item because I don't remember what those are. So you'll have to read for that in yourself. Um, half joking, but I, I really don't remember. Um, but yeah, down here you can you can see those methods, right? And, and get some more uh, accurate information on that. So, um, just, you know, date ranges there, but the WIP report's a real popular one that's needed. And again, it can post. Going back to those control files that I talked about earlier with settings for each module, we can set up, do I post, do I allow this to post? And what are the default accounts, which is down on below here. I got my over, my under, and a, you know, wherever that variance is going for sales. For the revenue side, okay, that's helpful. Audit reports. There's really a couple key ones that I used to always kind of fall back to. This one, history detail, and this one, post log. History detail, probably the more common one used. That's like your nitty gritty audit level, um, you know, uh, report for GL, like getting into the details of what happened, okay? Now, the uh, post log, there's a really cool feature I want to point out there when you run this report. So if I'm trying to find something that happened in a date range or in GL, again, I must have saved default, so kind of ignore that. Yeah, you put in the date range, you can select which module or journal it came from. Let's just think of that as a module standpoint. Well, it came from AP. Maybe we just leave it open. We're like, I don't care where it came from. I want to see what happened in this date range. Notice this post date. <clears throat> There'd be calls quite often where people might say, well, hey, I'm running my... <clears throat> trial balance and my, my aging reports and AP and AR is of 1231 and they're off. You know, they're, 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 they're good as of 11, 1130, but they're off this month. So I know something happened in the, in the, in the, this month at some point that screwed it up. And then maybe you can narrow down the date ranges. Like, well, I ran it on the 15th. It was good. The trial balance and the a, open AP and AR, they were good, but on the you know 17th, they're off. Okay. So what happened either on the 16th or 17th, you find the day. What's cool though is you can say, show me what I did physically, physically in this date range. Like I could put a, a date range saying, what did I do today, January 14th of 22, right? What did I actually do today that was posted to maybe last year? 
Does that make sense? So this is the physical computer date the person did the entry. And then regardless of what date range they posted it to. So it's a really helpful tool. It's like, shoot, I know I did it this week, but I don't remember what date I posted it to. It's like, we'll fill the date range out for that week that you did it. And you can leave the date range wide open and it'll find, it'll show those transactions. Okay. Um, well, when I say wide open, apparently it makes me fill it in, but I would just put in a big generic wide open date range. Right. Um, well, there it is. There's the one we posted together. I physically did it today. I did post it to today too, but you know, so that post, that post date is, is helpful in that regard. Um, this is a pretty nice one. GL job cost tie out. I don't believe that was there when I used to do support. In fact, I know it wasn't, <clears throat> you know, it, it's almost like, well, if I put an AP invoice to the material job cost category, but it went to the GL account of subcontracts, which you can avoid that happening, but say it did, well, they're out. Well, great. I got a different, you know, cost in my material expense than what I do in my, um, you know, material GL account compared to job costing, right? So these help with those types of things, even in the basic sense of if I put in a wide open date range here, um, I'll just do it through the end of last year. <clears throat> Let's take uh, here, like this Hopkins airport job, at least the direct jobs are good. Direct cost, I should say, it's got 194,000. Well, guess what? And our direct expenses in GL, we got 194,000. Cool. That's a good starting point. This one's off. I didn't, I didn't know that. A lot of these are probably off. Well, heck, yeah, all these with the difference. Um, this is all play data, but at least it lets you go. All right, these are out of whack. We can start to hone in on it and find out why they're not, they're not checking. They're not in sync between the two. So this job cost and GL tieout is pretty nice, along with that history detail in the post log. Talked about the WIP report which you can access WIP reports in GL and job costing. There's also a nice one on our dashboard tool here. Um, if I click that, it's actually under the financial tab. So even this is security driven, right? We got our job cost summary, financials, you know, quick summary of our income expenses. I can drill down, but this over under billing pie chart, if I click it, um, this one's cool because it actually shows the formulas, but it's uh, not, something that can post, just the one directly in the general ledger can post. Now, if you said, hey, I, my, my client or me, we want something different. I want a unique financial. I don't like the ones that are there, or maybe I do, but I want something different. We would go here under Genies, under Data Genie, okay? The two common ones, now you'll notice here, I can do custom vendor list, customer list, but the common real heavy hitters here are the job cost activity, the job cost report writer, and financials. So now if I was gonna make a brand new income statement, I'm not, but these the, basic, the basics here, we're, we're dragging over to the right what we want or double clicking. So I pulled over a title. I'm not gonna give you a super detailed breakdown of this, more of an awareness of where it is, and some basics, but I would say, what do I want to call my income section? Is it revenue, you know, income and sales. I don't know. What would I have below it? Well, I'd probably want my income accounts. So the, each green row is like an account. I say, well, it's a credit. Actually, I think it might fill that part in for me. So now I'm saying show all accounts, even ones that I've used on other other um, custom reports. Okay, but you know, I might say, hey, show. Yeah, I'm going to pull over income. Now I could technically pull over time material income, sales income, and group them together, right? Have one grand total of these accounts kind of smushed together. I'm just going to pull over each one individually. I like, oh, okay, I got that one income account, which we want that to be a credit. We're going to pull over the next one, right? You, you get the idea, but we, we're, we're grabbing them and we're pulling them over, okay? And so, and then if that was all of my income accounts, I'd pull over a subtotal. Say, what are we going to subtotal? Which should be a credit, right? We're going to subtotal our income. Yay. So I can just double click each one or I could have done a range. Uh, but that's the, and I'd say total, you know, total income. So, and then, and then you got grand totals, which can total up the subtotals. So, you know, you, you kind of build that, that template. This is the columns that you would see. Well, I want to see this year and that's it. This year, year to date. Great. Now, I didn't make a whole bunch there, but, but you can give it a name, change it. Now I'm going to cancel. I'm going to go right back to the data genie 
and I'm not going to double click for a new one. I'm going to select open. So I can take one that I've maybe already started with or that already was existing in the company's database that you're using. So it's already showing what I've done or somebody here did, right? I got my, my total direct expenses. Then I go to my operating expenses, right? I got my indirects with a subtotal grand total. But maybe, maybe I want this one. This one has this year and a prior year and a variance. Maybe I want this one to be monthly. I want current month. I want the prior month. I want two months ago, three months ago, right? Whatever, whatever it is. So I'm just going to pull these over and it could keep going. You get, you get it. Formulas, percentages, right? I could do variances. Notice right below it, budget. So even just year to date. I could have uh, year to date, budget year to date with a variance or monthly. So you can do budgets in, in GL just like our clients do budgets on their jobs. So this is the next screen where you kind of format it, make it look the way you want. Um, if you right click or click on columns and capsules, it gives you options to do different things like start and end dates and decimal spaces and the name of the report, right? I'll just say monthly. I'm not making a beautiful example here, right? I'm not really finishing it properly, but you know, if I hit finish, it's now a brand new report. So I still have, if I go back to GL reports, these are all the preloaded ones. And like I said a bit ago, Data Genie, that's ones I've made or somebody has that are custom. So in that drop down, we have multiple options now. Uh, this is the one I just kind of edited off of the one above it. I took the same thing, but I just pulled over months. Now notice my dates are saved for some random date range. Now I'm just gonna hit report. I can, I can format the months to actually show the months, but I didn't because I was just quickly doing it. Drill downs, I can click on these and drill into the detail, okay? So as I do that, it kind of expands down. Now, uh, before I run the, re which I did run the report, but notice this additional tab, I can run these, these reports. This is, a, again, that income statement. I could change the name temporarily. Do I want to show the end date? Do I want to indent lines? Do I want to show zeros? Do I want negatives around, or the uh, negatives in red? Um, do I want to run it by job? Do I want to run this by job type? You know, maybe I want an income statement just for my commercial work and maybe another one for my residential work. Those are categories that I attach to jobs. So I could see profitability by job type or by customer or by project manager. So you get some pretty cool features just by filling out and setting the jobs up with some with some little bit of extra detail on the job record. Um, can also help you and, and, and your clients run financial reports a little bit more effective, not just job cost reports. So if I pull up the job record, again, go to modify because I want to look at one that's there and these fields right here. I can run job cost reports and financials by any of these fields. If there's a field you want to run reports by that's not here, you can add it. This user is available, I think, everywhere. <clears throat> These are just samples. I'm superintendent, job type. This is another one that I must have set up. Over 100 grand, under 100 grand, I don't know. But you can create your own job categories, right? Your own, your own fields that I can use when I run reports and get data back out. Very common for people to add those user-defined fields on job records, as well as employee records for maybe some HR tracking of certain things. Those are set up, those user-defined fields are set up under system we were in the control files earlier in security underneath other user defined fields. So you just find the right, the area that you're adding it to. Like if I go to jobs, which I could just type a J and it would have popped me down there, but I could say, Oh, it's a new one, you know, complex job or how, you know, difficulty, really silly example. I'm going to say, well, it's a drop down menu. You could say it's a text field, a date, a, a link, but I'm gonna say, we wanna see the job difficulty. It's easy or hard, right? So now that's a field that I have existing on the job record or on an employee record or on a customer, wherever I've added it, okay? I can use those user-defined fields in reports in the Data Genie as well. So, you know, let's say I wanted to create a special job list. I can say, oh, here, yeah, I wanna see the job. I wanna see the description, I want to see the customer, maybe the PM, 
right? But I also have the ability to see user-defined fields. There's that difficulty, right? So again, the report writer is awesome. Now, the nice part with the report writer, well, the nice part is it's easy. I guess the only negative is it will it do anything you could dream of? No, it won't. But you're not limited to that. It's an open SQL database. Now, there's much smarter people here at our company that can get into the weeds with that for you. There's classes we do on it. Um, let me do this, though. I, I'm, I'm getting into the nitty gritty here a little bit. I'm going to open up Excel. You can, we have the ability to tap into the back end of foundation, right? There's security to block this for users, okay? Um, but I can go to data. Now, depending on the version of Excel, but you can do like query or I'm going to go get external data, other sources. And I think I want to do a Microsoft query. And so here's my, these are all my play companies. It would say, you know, CAS for construction accounting software, um, you know, Superstar Electric or whatever the company is. But I'm just going to go into one of my play ones and I'm going to log in with the same ID and password that I log into foundation with. And again, I'm only, I'm, I, I could have that security restricted where I can't see anything I shouldn't. But even if I said jobs, like if I want to do a special job report, and it's live, it's pulling from the system. And I want to see the job number, the description. I want to see if it's yes or no for certified payroll. I want to see if it's active or closed. Project manager ID. And I can link different tables together. People do pivot tables, charts, graphs. Um, you can save these to where when you open, open them, not just auto refresh, but um, pop open parameters for dates and things. So it's really pretty wild. It's just pulling that data behind the scenes. There's people here like Scott Kern who, and, uh, that does classes on that, and he's way smarter than I am and probably every level, sadly. But that, that, is, a, that is a really helpful tool that's, that's available. Um, now, we talked about day-to-day -day stuff. I was poking through some reports, and I mentioned you know financials, job cost, GL tie-out, WIP, the data genie functionality here, which I just scratched the surface. Um, everything's date specific and, and, and date ranges, right? So you can go back as far as you want. It's not a hard closed system. There is the ability to do budgets in GL. Um, so under general ledger daily for day-to-day -day stuff, we can enter in account budgets. So it's just a journal entry that you can do for, for budget purposes but it's a special journal code called budget because it's not really going to true GL history, it's budget history. That way I can, can run budget versus actuals on financials, okay? I want to point out under general ledger, under maintenance, we had our chart of accounts. Divisions are for people that use divisions, profit centers, right? <clears throat> journals. Now the journals are set up already, but you can add more. You might do a reoccurring, an auto reversing. So the journal type, regular, Budget, right, which we already have that budget one set up already, I believe. Accrual, those are going to be like the auto-reversing ones. Maybe I'm going to post one right now, but it's going to auto-reverse on the February 14th. Um, reoccurring amounts and reoccurring accounts. Just depends on what it is, right? Reoccurring amounts has the accounts and the amounts. So those journal types are, 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 are pretty important in how, this, how those can help. Now to do a journal entry, now I always tell people doing demonstrations that the things you're doing day to day in GL are really just bank recs and journal entries, right? Um, create journal entry. And right below it is reconciling cash accounts. That's kind of a lie. You can also do credit card reconciliations there. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So journal entry, what's the journal code? Okay, I apparently have a reoccurring. I have honestly no idea what's gonna be on it, um, but, I'm, but I'm doing that. So um, modify, apparently I never entered one yet, <laughs> but if I did, it would be reoccurring and the, and the items would be sitting there already that were reoccurring, okay? But let's, let's do one other quick thing here. When I pick the two code, uh, the two codes I like to point out is GL, just a, just a basic GL journal entry. GJ is essentially the same thing, except it also has the job field, right? And so that's important because sometimes it's going to force you to put that job in if it's a direct expense. But, okay, description's required, great, test, date. And we just, I can tab down to add rows. This is basic stuff. Like, there's no row. It's like, how do I enter? Well, you just hit tab or you right-click and add or insert. 
I'm just tabbing. It just pops down. So, you know, obviously it's got a <clears throat> debit and credits have to match, but yeah, we're putting in a buck there, maybe a dollar credit to somewhere else. I'm just making up stuff here. Um, but yeah, if this was a job direct expense, it would fill, make me fill in the right categories, which is good. I can import journal entries. Okay. Now, if you're like, well, how do I know what the file layout is? Remember that shift F1? I'm hoping it's going to do it. Um, yeah, importing journal transactions, right? Here's the file layout. So that, if anything, that might be one of the most valuable things I said. The shift F1, as silly as that is, or help current item is really helpful. Um, so you got your journal entries. Now, anything for the um, bank rec, reconciling, it's going to show here any account that's labeled as checking savings or credit card in the in the chart of account structure. So if I go back to general ledger maintenance and accounts and pull up, I don't even need to pull up an account. If one of them is tagged as checking savings or credit card, it's going to go to that reconciliation feature. So if I go back to general ledger daily, you know, we looked at journal entries for a second, which we can do again, do the just general journal entries, reoccurring, auto reversing, reconcile. All right, so I'm going to pick random checking account, and we'll say we're doing it for December of last year. Maybe my ending balance is X amount of dollars. Now, I haven't reconciled in here maybe ever, so bear with the example, but you're basically just checking off boxes, right? Now, <clears throat> notice here that it'll help. You have search. Maybe it's a, hey, boy, I can't find this one transaction. Well, you can look for it by date, dollar amount, description. So you have the ability to search and find data, right? Um, you can clear ranges of checks and payments, deposits and other, right? You know, clear checks one through a hundred. You can do journal entries on the fly. You know, maybe I don't want to save, close out, go do that, you know, bank fee journal entry. I can just say, yeah, it's going to be $50 bank fee. And we're going to type that in and kind of do that on the fly. Um, right. Is a withdrawal. So there it is. So, you know, to help, to help do that. Now I can't hit reconcile until it's at a zero difference. Okay. Probably makes sense, but that's how the reconciliations are done. Time-wise, I can go on for a heck of a lot longer. I'm going to point out real quick. So on AP under daily um, invoice entry, credit cards are so much more right in use today than, than many years ago. Um, credit card transactions right here in standard AP, I can label it as a prepaid credit card and you choose that right credit card, which I have won. So that's gonna to go to the you know credit card reconciliation feature. And it's really, it's like it says, it's prepaid. So I can still job cost it, put in, you know, whoever supplier, and, and maybe we, you know, we did this for, you know, job whatever, 12, it was, you know, material for that job, but I paid for it already be, by credit card. I'm just logging that record. It's prepaid, it's gonna go right in and out. But then that way, when the, the credit card bill comes in, I can pick Amex as the vendor and down below, debit that that liability to offset it okay some companies actually import their credit card transactions a little bit more advanced if the because we can import ap invoices through another tool we have the file formats go they got to be messed with though before it gets imported back in um let me real quick uh reversals um and then hopefully i'm not overstaying my welcome obviously jump jump ship when you need to um ap Let's just do a quick, a quick correction. Most screens are, are similar in concept how we do a correction. So let's put this invoice, which we did. We posted that invoice, right? We posted one a little bit ago. When I hit, I was talking about listing and posting, right? So to make sure that it's committed to the program. Now let, let's actually say though, I'll enter another one about the same as the other ones I just did. I'll put the vendor, I'll put it, you know, $5 invoice, for example. Now, because that vendor has proper defaults on it, which is why I picked it, it knows that's a supplier. And I, I defaulted that GL account on that vendor setup. In the actual AP maintenance vendors, where I put that vendor in, I said, well, it's a supplier, so my default is material. Maybe I defaulted the term. So again, defaults are so important. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to post this one, this transaction 388. So if I said, oops, that was wrong. I, I just, it just clicked as I saved it. I forgot that I should have done this or this. I can modify and I can say modify unposted. There's no danger there. It's not in history anywhere. So 
these are all unposted. There's that $5 one I had. I can change it, edit it, delete it. Oh, should have been 10 bucks. Great. We're not, you know, we never committed it to the program yet. Now, again, if I do, if I hit list, and I'm, I'm not going to post everything outstanding. I don't know why. I'm just not. Let's just post this, this one. I just adjusted the 10 bucks. So now this one's transaction 388, saying that out loud so I remember it when I try to adjust it now. But it's posted. It's in GL. It went to job costing. Great. Now, if I said I want to correct it, I don't want to go to like eight you know, GL journals to do it or job costing. No, fix it here. So if I go back to daily, and notice here there's quick reversal. This is hopefully taking out some potential extra steps for users, especially if they're not real comfy with the software yet. If you get quick reversal, I can say, okay, it's transaction. I know it's 388 because I just yelled it out loud, but I could search by job, vendor, customer, date range. I'm just saying show everything. There's the last one, right? So you can say just do a full reversal. I don't even need to do anything. It's just going to back it out with the proper audit trail. It takes it out of GL history, takes it out of AP history, takes it off the job and a proper reversal to the date that I want it to go. Maybe this was done in December, but I want it to reverse in January, great. Or reverse and copy. That's gonna back it out completely, right, with a proper reversal for us, but pop open a duplicate to change whatever I want. So trying to just automate that a bit. Same steps behind the scenes, but it's a little faster and hopefully easier. This option is the is another way, classic one, right? Go to enter invoices. Same for AR. Um, I go modify. Now it's it's posted, so it's not unposted. I'm saying enter an adjustment or also reverse it. Let's just say it's an adjustment. I don't want to totally get rid of it. I just want to change it. So I hit the adjustment button. This is the right one, right? It is showing as posted. And now I can change it. Now, if I said, well, it went to the wrong job, I can add more line items and put a negative to the one job, a positive, right? Negative 10 bucks, positive 10 bucks to another job. You know what I mean? So that's where I think the correct, the quick reversal and copy can be more effective for some. But if I just wanted to change the date or the dollar amount, again, the audit, uh, audit trail is there, the correction trail is there, but we have the ability to do that. Um, Real quick, probably so silly and you noticed it already, but you can export to Excel pretty pretty quick. Just one of these buttons here. I always recommend use the CSV button, the little blue one. Not the dark blue word button, but this one. It's more like what you see is what you get. Um, but you can also, um, well here, let's just quick do it. Pops it open. I know that's silly, that's basic, but you know, dump it out to Excel, PDF, you can email things right out. So that's nice. Um, file, but you can also do save as and just save it whatever you want uh, as, as well. Um, support help, and I'm gonna have to jump off myself, but give us feedback, me, please, and only if it's good. Um, you know, we, we want to give the opportunity to, to educate some people while we're super busy here on our end, just like you guys are. Our consultants and trainers are just slam right now in a, in a, in a good problem way. Um, so we'll continue these if you guys want them. Um, I'm happy to do it, or if you didn't want me to do it, <laughs> somebody else will for, for you. Um, but yeah, so these are these are these are great for us too, you know, just to help help you guys get a feel for things. Uh, you guys hit me up with questions too. I'll uh, make sure my contact info is there. But for help, remember the user guide. Um, release notes is nice. It tells you what we've been up to, like what we've done on the most recent releases. Um, foundation on the web. If you can steal your client, um, if you, if you can get your own client ID password, like your clients, right? I'm sure they'd tell you. The website has a ton of good material. Um, YouTube videos, um, a lot of help. I'm saying this like I remember. I haven't been in there for a long time, but it, it, there's a lot of good content in there for educational items. And again, the, the help menu itself is really is really effective. If you are on site at a customer, at one of your clients, or just working on something for them, or just in general, um, and you're listed as an authorized caller, if you need to be listed as an authorized caller, tell your client, and they'll have, add you to the list officially. So when you call in. We, we know you can call, you're an authorized person. You can also just hit log a call, which again, we need that client ID and password and that goes right into the support queue for help. Um, so just trying to do, trying to cover some basics. I probably threw a lot at you guys. Um, thank you all for, for jumping on. Um, I will absolutely um, help if people have just random questions. I, of course, will get back to people between demos and other things that I'm doing. 
um, or to, you know, just directly answer your questions. If I have to defer you to somebody else, don't be mad. You can keep reaching out to me anytime. Uh, my contact info, do I even have it on here? Yeah, let me pull it up here. Boo, boo, boo. This is me and uh, my bald head. There's, there I am down there. Just use my email. It's probably the easiest. Geff at foundationsoft.com. Um, I'm always around. Been here a long time. I can get you in the right place if, if uh, you need something, don't know who to go to. Um, and, and same with the other sales uh, managers, as we call ourselves, Patrick and Tom, uh, and a few others here in the sales department. We're happy to help, right? So, so reach out. But yeah, Geff at foundationsoft.com. And uh, recording of this will go out and you'll have that and then we'll continue these based on feedback and uh thanks a lot everybody have a good uh, have a good weekend enjoy your friday and uh take care